First one, of course, Northern Extremity, Mabuyan Island, the mountain province. Hopefully, go to Kalinga and swing through up north to Opayo. Third installment, Mindoro, the twin national parks are here. Okay, then, our favorite is to go down to Romblo. Finally, we go to our last stop, Negros and Zamboanga. And most of the places that we go, these are natural environments that have a carrying capacity as to how many people. So we have to do this responsibly. We have to do it in a measured way. The Philippines has so much to offer in terms of biodiversity, in terms of natural gifts. Well, this will show the Filipinos some of the places that they don't know about. How can you even say you want to protect something you don't know. In every in, I know, in places that I visit, I always end up talking to the people. And um, it's very interesting because you could see that the culture is dictated by the environment and then also vice versa, where the culture and the people also dictate what happens in the environment. We want to reduce our carbon footprint in the atmosphere. The road system is beautiful here in the Philippines. And the, uh, the Roro system is also very beautiful, so it's, it's, it's seeing our countryside in a different light other than just flying on an airport. Doing the things that, you know, we can only dream of, but actually we're doing it, you know what I mean? Go out in the mountains, swim the lakes, and I believe that when we do that, we'll find a renewal of the spirit. In every journey that we go through, we meet so many people and we learn something from all of them. I'm an advocate for wildlife in their own habitats. After the practice of observing wildlife on their own terms, in their own wild state. I'm doing this for my kids. I'm doing this for my kids because, you know, I'm 50 years old and I feel that this is my last grand adventure. In conserving this last wild place of the Philippines, we preserve our own quality of life. The last wild place sets off its maiden journey to the blustery landscapes of Babuyan Islands. With its geographic location, the Babuyanes promises abundant marine life and many natural wonders that mark this group of islands a true wild place. For our first expedition, we really need to go to the wildest and farthest place. Uh, the wildest ones will be coming in. Kalayan, the farthest one from Santa Ana, is Babuyan Claro. These are the reasons why we're going to Babuyan. We're seeing the humpback whales, we've got to climb Mount Babuyan, we've got to dive undiscovered dive spots, and of course, the Kalayan Rail. You know, the humpback whales go there six months of the year. They come all the way from Alaska to go down to the Babuyan Islands to give birth to their young. And then we're going to climb Mount Babuyan. It's about 2,000 something feet. From the research that I know, not too many people have dived any of these islands. Probably be one of the first to dive these. They're all undiscovered dive spots. Okay, we will try to find the Kalayan Rail. It's a rare flightless bird that can only be found in the island of Kalayan that we're going. The nice thing about it, it was discovered only last 2004. Now we've got to bring a generator, bring our tents, diving gear, binoculars for the whale watch. The other thing we need to bring is a GPS. Imagine, I think it's going to take at least 60 to 18 hours to get there. It's got to be one of them. We've got to go there.
What? Yes. Time is it? It can be daunting to travel all the way north to the Buboyan Islands. With no direct flights, unpredictable boat schedules, minimal infrastructure, and the forces of nature, the Buboyanes should be part of any adventure traveler's list. Look at that. It's a nice place. That thing is big. Oceanic sea snake. Oceanic. The one that lives on the island. Is it poisonous? And when you see one, what should you do? Appreciate it. You shouldn't try catching it. After a brief look at the small town and checking into our homestay, we head out to sea to find some humpback whales. If you're shooting this and documenting this area, I think hopefully we'll provide uh, you know some some people some uh, interest to, to come here and see how beautiful it really is. Mm. You know, hopefully we can see the whales. You know, I'm just hoping. So, if assuming we, we spot the whale, so how do we approach it? I mean, what uh, what's what's the protocol? Well, to not rush into it, not to head it off. Okay. It's def that's definitely wrong. Just approach slowly. I think the uh, engine bothers them because mm -hmm. when you get too close, they, dive, yeah. they do the terminal dive and when they do the terminal dive, that's it. As we search for the humpback whales, several pilot whales start to make an appearance. What else can we do when such an opportunity arises? Of course, we jump into the water. In this particular afternoon, the humpback whales are just not in sight. But the pilot whales are giving us enough of a thrill to really encourage us in this expedition. A new day begins in Camigin Norte. The last wild curve gives you a quick refresher on the fruits of the sea. Anna hangs out with the ladies of Camigin. Rico discovers the wonders of the inland. Water buffalo, how are you? And later, an underwater discovery, both magnificent and tragic. <laughs> <laughs> 